it's Thursday and today we're going to be making a leopard gecko. I don't really have anything else to say, so let's just get into it. So I did just want to cut in for a second and let anybody who came to the live stream the other day know that I did finish the little platter pal, a little platypus. He's got all four of his little feet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's talk tools and materials. To make your gecko today, you are going to need eight ply, 100% acrylic yarn in three colors. You're going to need a main body color, a color for inside the mouth, and a color for his spots. These are of course optional and we're gonna stitch them on afterwards. You're going to need a pair of 20 millimeter safety eyes, your 3.5 millimeter hook, scissors, pins and needles, and some stuffing. But that's it. So a written version of today's pattern will be sent out to my patrons and will also be made available in my Etsy. I will leave links to both in the description down below for anybody who is interested. So here is the gecko we are going to be making today. Now I have based him on the leopard gecko, but I think that if you made him without the spots, he would pass for like a regular gecko. I just liked the fact that the, the leopard geckos had the really like big squishy tails. And I kept meaning to find a squeaker to put into him so he could like eat me. But I um couldn't end up finding one. Now I'll be adding all of his spots at the end. It's a really simple technique. And the last thing I want to say, just as part of an introduction to this little guy, is that we are using some stitching to do a little bit of the sculpting in the face. So be prepared for that. So to start with today, we're going to make his lower jaw, which includes this little pink panel inside. And we're going to make his eyelids. Now, the reason we're starting with those is we're going to attach those in the round as we go. So for his eyelids, I'm going to grab my main color, which is this soft peach. Now I should technically be using yellow again, but I just really wanted to end up with one that was a slightly different, different citrusy kind of tone. And I'm going to make a magic ring of six. We are then going to work six increases. So that's an increase in each of the stitches around until we're up to 12 stitches. You can see that that brings us up to this little disc shape. Now, if you grab one of your eyes at this point, you should note that that little disc should be just slightly bigger than the eye. So then we're going to work just one final row and it consists of two repeats of three single crochet and an increase. So there is our first one and we're going to do one more lot. So that leaves us with four stitches remaining from our second row and we're going to just basically not work into them and instead finish off. So this might not look like much right now, but if you take your eye and insert it through your starting magic ring, now if this hole isn't open enough, oof, oof enough. Now if your magic ring is pulled too tightly to fit the stem of your eye through, which mine was, you can use your hook and a thicker hook, sort of the next size up to kind of stretch that hole a little bit bigger. And there we go. So you'll see here what that final row did has given us this little bit of an extra lip that's gonna go at the top of the eye while the bottom of the eye sits just slightly larger than our eye. And I'm just going to work up another one of them now. There we go. Pop those to one side. So next up, we're going to work our mouth and we're going to start by using the color you want on the inside of your mouth, which for me is this soft pink. And once again, I'm going to start with a magic ring of six. Like so. Now, instead of continuing to work around in a continuous spiral, what I'm going to do is chain one and turn my work. So I'm working back into the stitches that I just did. And we are going to work a single crochet, four increases. And then a single crochet in the last stitch. We're then going to finish off. So see how that's formed? It's almost a half moon shape, but yours might also like extend a little bit further around than that. That's going to be the inside of his mouth. So then I'm going to work up that exact same piece in my main color, but I'm not going to finish off at the end of it, which should look just like that. I'm going to chain one and turn, and I'm going to grab my pink piece and we're going to layer them on top of each other. So they should both have 10 stitches in their little semicircle and work through both layers. Just work a single crochet through each pair of stitches around. 
there we are. So it should look a little bit like a citrus wedge at the moment. I don't know how well these colors are turning up on camera, but this is a really pretty pale pink with a little pretty pastel orange around the outside. So it's looking like a little grapefruit. So then we are going to chain one and turn and we're going to be working around this ridge again. And we're going to work 10 back post single crochet. For anybody who doesn't know, back post single crochet is when you're working around the post of the stitch, but you're inserting your hook from the back of the piece, around the post, back to the back of the piece. Then you just yarn over and pull up your loop and work your single crochet as per usual. Which should look like basically a little lip around that bottom edge. So then we're not gonna turn, but we are gonna rotate so that we are looking straight down at this rough edge that's along the back of both pieces. And working through both layers, we're going to work eight single crochet along this edge here. So that's two along the top so far. If you're having trouble fitting those in, don't be afraid to put two into the same little gap. The important bit is just that you end up with eight in total. And then we're gonna finish off. So there is our lower jaw and our eyes. <laughs> Look, he's already happy to see you. Pop all that to one side. So next up, we're going to make this head, body and tail piece. We start at the tip of the nose and we're just going to work up this initial surge of the head before we attach the jaw in. So grabbing our main color, work up the first 10 rows of the head. Now you'll notice you work this up that we are placing increases and decreases in very specific places that might seem a little strange at first. That is because we're building out the width of his cheeks as well as this kind of bulge at the top of his head that's going to help blend his eyelids in. Now for my leopard gecko, I added the stripes afterwards, but you could also be weaving a strand in and out of your stitches during the creation of him to get the same effect. So there we go. There is the head at the end of row 10. And at this stage, we're going to attach our eyes. So I'm gonna grab those two eye pieces back in. Note that I've still got my eyes inserted through the magic ring of our eyelid pieces. And we're going to then insert the stem through into the body as well, and then clip on through both layers. So if you look at your headpiece, you'll note that we have these two cheeks, and then this kind of like point in the middle of the head. And yours might look a little bit more puffed out like that, but you should at, at the very least be able to identify that you've got a flat underside and a sort of a more shaped top. So if you grab your top and pinch your cheeks, you'll end up with that sort of T shape that I'm dealing with there. And each of your eyes is going to insert into one of these divots. I'm going to start by counting back to row six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Insert my eye just loosely into the middle of that groove. So we're equal distance from like the center point and the side of the cheek. And then do the same thing on the other side. Then just sort of basically check that your eyes are kind of centered where you will want them to sit. So before we snap our backs on, we are then going to just Holding the safety eye, rotate our eyelid around to where you want it to sit. And I want mine to sit mainly on top, but a little bit facing outwards. Making sure that they are rotated correctly now before you snap your backs on might save you a little bit of hassle just because once it's snapped on, there's not always a lot of room to move the pieces around. So with that, I'm happy with my eye location and I'm going to snap my backs on. There we go. So I'm just gonna take a moment and just pull all these strands through to the inside of the piece just so that I'm working a little bit neater like so and uh later on as we do our assembly we will be sewing the lower edge of these eyes down to the head which will stop them from sticking out quite so much so don't worry too much if yours is looking very binocular <laughs> so now we're going to carry on making the head and in the next row we're actually going to be attaching our jaw so we're going to start by working a series of single crochet and decreases until we reach where we want the mouth to be attached You'll see that my active stitch is now on one side of the, the flat bit underneath the head. And then we're going to attach our jaw over the next eight stitches. Now, just as a note for anybody not wanting to include the jaw, those eight stitches, you can just work them as regular single crochet and then just carry on. But for anybody attaching the jaw like I am, what we're going to do is grab our, our jaw piece and identify which side is the, the tongue and which side is sort of the lower jaw and place it tongue side against the head, so just like so. You're going to count eight stitches back from your finishing off point. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, which brings us to this stitch here. And as you can see here, inserting through our jaw first and then into the head, 
We're going to work eight single crochet through both pieces to attach the jaw to the head. So just like that. And with that done, we're just going to finish working the rest of that row. So there is our head. You'll note that he is very muppety at the moment with this jaw. But when we come back and we do our finessing and our decoration and our assembly, we're going to actually stitch the sides of this mouth to better set that pose in. But for now, you get to live with your Muppet lizard. <laughs> Which I actually think is really amusing. So there we are at the end of row 11. And he's already starting to come together. Now, once again, if you didn't attach that jaw, yours will be looking something a little bit closer to that. But from here on out, we're just going to act as though everybody attached the jaw, okay? Okay, I agree. <laughs> so from here on out, we'll be using a mix of half double crochet and single crochet to form the body. So for anybody who needs a refresher, a half double crochet using US crochet terms. So when you yarn over your hook, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So you've got three loops on your hook, then yarn over and pull through all three loops. So it's basically the same as a single crochet, but it will give you a little bit more height. And that's important when forming the curve of this particular gecko. And now we're going to work up the next 16 rows to finish forming the body. And just remember when working your slip stitches, work them very loosely because you will have to insert your hook through them in the next round. If you find that too difficult, you can just use single crochet instead. So there we are at the end of row 27. And you may be wondering why we haven't stuffed up to this point, and that is because this tiny little opening that we're going to stuff through is going to force you to have some self-control. This is a piece that really needs to be stuffed a very small amount at a time. And so by not stuffing until now, we're forcing ourselves to only stuff it a very small amount at a time. So yeah, grab your stuffing and tear it all into chunks the size of cotton balls. And then we are going to very lightly stuff the head. So I poke one little ball down into the nose and then one ball into each of the two cheeks. Then I'm going to tuck one ball up into the brow ridge and just one more chunk into the head itself. So all that stuffing is sitting in just the head part of this. <laughs> so upsetting. Which is going to really only emphasize his Muppety features. So you should note that the roof of his mouth should be concave, which means curving inwards, not curving outwards. That is to make room for his mouth. So you're allowed to be a little bit less fussy with the rest of this body, but I would still encourage you to just add a little bit at a time and just build your stuffing up from the neck down. You, the body itself can be stuffed quite firmly. Now I couldn't get to a craft store and I ran out of stuffing. And so today's project is brought to you by a pillow that I bought on clearance. Not a used pillow. It's a, it's a new pillow that I bought on clearance, but it's still, still just, just a pillow. So squidgy it around until it's all sitting evenly. So again, Mr. Muppet is going to look a little bit more dignified when we're done with him, I promise. So now that we've stuffed up to the opening, we are going to once again grab our hook. And then over the next 18 rows, we're going to build up his luxurious apostrophe of a tail, making sure to stuff as we go. And finish off. Now you'll note that you've got this little opening left at the tip of your tail. You are going to take your remaining yarn and weave it through the front loops of each of those remaining six stitches. Then pull it tight to close and you'll see it acts like a little reverse magic ring. And just tuck that end away inside the body. And there is our lovely lizard base with his very Muppet mouth. And we're gonna pop that to one side. So next up, we are going to be making his tiny feet his legs. So, so he does have a front leg and a back leg. We're going to start by making his front leg. So we're going to start with a magic ring of six. So that's the sole of his foot. And we're then just going to make it a little bit bigger by working two increases. And then four single crochet, which will leave you with eight single crochet around. 
So in the next row, we're going to build out his toes. Now I did look this up and these geckos do seem to have like five finger slash toes. And so that's what I'm doing today. Uh, let me know in the comments if I've done that wrong. You can always replace one of the toe stitches that we're about to do with just a single crochet to reduce the number of toes in total. <laughs> total. So in row three, we are going to work five toes in a row. And how we work them is by using a double treble crochet stitch, which means we're going to yarn over three times, insert our hook through the front loop only of the next stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop. So you should have five loops in total on your hook, yarn over and pull through the first two loops and then just repeat that two loops at a time until you're left with just one loop on your hook. And there is your double treble stitch. And so it's looking a little bit funny at the moment. We're then gonna fold it forward and insert our hook through the back loop of the same stitch we were just working into, work a slip stitch. So that's our first one and we're going to do the same thing in the next four stitches. So this technique I've used as like toes and nostrils on a number of different creations at this point. In fact, next week we'll be using it to create nostrils on our giraffe. Yeah, I just find that this is a really good way to create a cute little toe bobble. So there are our five toes. And then we are going to work three single crochet to get back to the start of our round. Like so. So that is the basis of our little foot. So in the next row, you need to be careful to only work through the treble crochet stitches and not the slip stitches, because that will double your stitch count for the row if you're not careful. In the next row, we're going to start by working two decreases. So I'm going to pick up the loops from the first two treble crochets and work my first decrease then pick up the loops from the next two treble crochets and work my decrease. And then I'm working four single crochet around to finish the row. So the first one will fall into the last toe. And then three more just in the three single crochet from the previous round. So at the end of row four, your round should have six stitches available in it. We're then going to work four rows of six single crochet for a combined total of 24 stitches. Like so. We're then going to work two repeats of an increase and then two single crochet, which will leave our row at eight single crochet around. We're then going to finish off our front leg by working three rows of eight single crochet for a combined total of 24 stitches. And finish off. So we will be left with an opening at the top, that's fine. And we are just going to lightly stuff this piece. Make sure not to overstuff this one here or you'll create very strange shapes in your feet. Right, so there is our little front leg and we are of course going to need two of those. So I'm gonna pop those to one side. So next we're going to create our back legs and we use the exact same techniques for our back legs as we used for our front legs. There's just a slight difference in a couple of the rows. And finish off. And then we're going to lightly stuff our back feet as well. So there is our finished back foot and you are of course going to need two of those as well. You'll note that they are very very similar to the front legs. They are just a little bit wider in places and a little bit shorter. Okay so now that we have made all of our gecko bits the time has come to assemble. So the first thing we're going to do is just a little bit of plastic surgery on this face. Now for the assembly of your gecko I do actually suggest that you have both a sharp pointy needle for the sewing. I prefer a curved one, but a straight one should be fine as well. As well as like a plastic tapestry kind of needle, which we'll be using to add his spots later. So with some of my main color threaded onto my needle, the first thing I'm going to do is stitch down the low edge of each of my eyes to lock those eyelids into position. I'm going to do that by inserting my needle from the outside up and over those stitches. Working where possible in the gaps between the stitches of the head and not just like stabbing it randomly through because we want just the nicest join between these two pieces that we can possibly get. 
So we're going to do that for both eyes. There we go, those are fastened down now. So the next thing that we want to do is pull the, the inside of the mouth up towards the head. So what that's going to do is flatten our face out, whereas right now it's quite, like I said, bulbous and, and muppety is the best way I can describe it. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do, it's the same strand that I used to sew the eyelids on. I'm going to thread it straight down through the head. So it comes out approximately there, if you can see that. So we're close to one edge, we're a couple of stitches in. And we're going to just squeeze the lip. So pull that tight, then work a little stitch to lock that all into place. I'm going to thread my needle into the mouth and through to the roughly the same spot on the other side of the mouth. We're not pulling this one tight, that's literally just to move our needle. So we'll do a little tiny locking stitch. And I usually just do that one sort of sti one crochet stitch width when I'm doing those. So it's going to be our new kind of locked in position. And now I'm going to thread my needle up Top of the head, it should emerge right near the cor the outside corner of your other eye. Pull it all the way through and pull it tight. And once again, put a little locking stitch this time on top. So that should be pulling your, the roof of your mouth up. It'll be pulling it up evenly on both sides. You may still find that it bows down slightly in the middle. That's okay. So the last thing we're going to be doing is fixing this mouth. So as mentioned, we're very, very muppety. You might like that. I want to fix it slightly. So you can finish off this yarn and thread a new piece in, but I'm just going to thread mine back through the head to where the mouth meets the head. And you'll note that yours might also be sitting off slightly to one side. So mine is definitely veering off to the left here for me. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm just going to grab it and pull it centered because crochet will let you do that. And all I'm going to do is place a small stitch through the head into like the first stitch around the outside of that jaw. I'm going to stitch through it a couple of times. And what that's going to do is hold that jaw slightly more closed, which will just make it look better incorporated into the body. And I'm going to stitch through the head and do the same thing on this corner of the mouth as well. So there we go. So the mouth only opens a little bit now, but it's a little bit more realistic. Then to finish off, I'm just going to thread my needle out through anywhere on the body, trim it off really close and poke it in. Now here is where things might get a little confusing. So the next thing that I would personally do is sew my spots onto all of my pieces. However, I understand that not everybody wants spots on their lizard. So instead what I'm going to show you next is where to pin your legs on so that we can bid farewell to anybody who doesn't want to sit through this. And then afterwards, I will show you how we apply the spots. I think it looks really complicated, but honestly, it's something that I, I just zoned out and did. So first up, we're going to grab our front legs and they are the slightly taller pair. If you needed help remembering, we're going to squish the top of those front legs flat so that our toes are facing the front. We're going to identify the narrowest point in our neck, count one row of stitches back from it. And that is where we're going to line up our front legs. So I'm lining them up vertically centered on the body. I'm pinning those in place there. I'm going to repeat that process on the other side. So identify the narrowest point of the neck, one row of stitches back, and then vertically center my leg. There's our front feet. For the moment he's like a little tadpole. Then we're going to grab our back legs and pinching them in the same way. We're going to identify the narrow point between the body and the tail and just line up the back edge of that leg with that narrow point. Turn over and do the same thing on the other side. So that's where your legs will go. You should check to make sure that he stands and doesn't wobble. So you can sew those on now, but if you're going to do spots like I am, I would suggest not. <laughs> so I'm going to remove all of those now. I'll pop them back on later. And instead, what I'm going to do is grab a plastic darning needle and the color I'm going to use for my spots, which is going to be black, just like I did for my yellow guy. I'm going to be working in really long, nice long strands, but I'll still probably need to replace this every so often. So where I'm going to start on mine is the back of the head, and then I'm going to do the body and the tail, and then I'll come back and do the face. But basically all you do is start off by just like threading your 
needle out and through the lizard, just through any of the openings in the stitches. Then I'm just going to stitch around one to just get us started. And that will stop our start point unraveling. Notice I'm not pulling it very tightly. And then it's just a matter of following the rows around, weaving your needle in and out of the piece. You basically want every second stitch to have a little black stripe over it. So I did mention before that as you stitch up your lizard, you can sort of weave a strand in and out and it does work fine. That is how I did part of our, our yellow fellow. But I also just found that I liked the control and the not having to juggle multiple strands. I'm just doing it this way afterwards. So just like that. Now, because I work in a continuous spiral, if I wanted to, I could just continue working around and around and around. And instead, I'm just gonna try and focus my stripes on top of my gecko, leaving the bottom of it plain. And you note that I'm not being too precious with the edge of those markings either. Rough enough is good enough. So yeah, something about this process I just find very soothing. So with the body and tail done, I am now just going to reattach my black at the back of the head and we're just going to do the same thing on top of the head as well, being careful to avoid the mouth region as well as work around each of the two eyes. I'm then going to be adding some similar detailing to each of the legs, but this time instead of doing it into every row, I'm going to be doing it into every second row, just to get those spots a little bit more spaced out. And with all of that done, it was time to repin my legs on and finish sewing my gecko together. And there is your finished gecko. Alrighty, so there are our little leopard geckos. Okay, I hope you had fun making them with me today. I don't actually have names for either of these two yet. So this one here kind of reminds me of lemon and this one here kind of reminds me of grapefruit. But if you could leave any suggestions for the names down in the comments, I would really appreciate it. Other than that, I will see you next week. Okay, bye.